As you can see, I've inserted two simple parts into the assembly workspace, and now we need to position the parts with respect to the assembly coordinate system and to each other. I'm going to use the assembly constraints available to do this. I'll first open the Insert Assembly Constraint tool from the Assembly Modeling toolbar. The Assembly Constraints dialog now appears. Now we can begin inserting constraints to position these two parts with respect to each other. When you place an assembly constraint between two parts, you need to select an entity on each part to use as a reference. First I click on the Items to Constrain field to activate it. Then I left click to select the face on the orange part, and you can see that that face appears in the Items to Constrain field. Next, I left click to select the face on the green part. After I've made the second selection, the constraint types that are available become active, so I need to specify which type of constraint to apply. In this case, I'm going to use the Align constraint. Each constraint type and what they do will be discussed in detail in the following segments. Once I select a line, notice that the offset field populates with the current offset distance between the two faces. I'm going to change this value to zero offset, and then I can check the preview option to see a preview of what the assembly will look like when the constraint is applied. As I rotate the model, you can see that those two faces are now coplanar. To apply the constraint, I need to click the Apply button. The Assembly Constraints dialog remains open so that you can continue to apply additional constraints. I'm going to go ahead and select two more faces to align, and again I'm going to make the offset value zero. Then I can apply the constraint, and this time I'm going to close the dialog. If necessary, you can turn on the display of an individual part's reference geometry and then subsequently use that reference geometry in conjunction with assembly constraints. This is especially helpful if you need to position the parts accurately in an assembly design with respect to the origin. So as you can see, I've inserted one part into my assembly here, and since it's the first part in the assembly, I'm going to fix the position of it so that each of the part reference planes are aligned with the assembly reference planes. I'm going to do this by turning on the display of the part reference geometry. So I can right click on the part in the Design Explorer and then select Show Reference Geometry from the pop-up menu. As you can see, after I do this the reference geometry that I used to model the part is then displayed in the assembly workspace. So now I can actually use that reference geometry in conjunction with assembly constraints. So I open the Insert Assembly Constraint tool and now I'll begin placing constraints between the part's reference geometry and the reference geometry of the assembly. So I'm going to begin by selecting the XY plane of the assembly and then the corresponding plane from my part design. Both planes appear in the Items to Constrain field. I want to select Align and then change the offset value to zero. I click Apply to accept the constraint and you can see that the two planes are now coplanar. The Assembly Constraints dialog remains open and I'm going to go ahead and place another constraint, first selecting the ZX plane of the assembly, and then the ZX plane of the part. Change the offset to zero, and then click apply. And as you can see, the two planes snap together. I'm going to create the final alignment between the YZ planes, and now I can close the dialog. To hide the reference geometry, simply right click on the part again, and then uncheck the Show Reference Geometry option.
and the part reference geometry again will be hidden at that point. By default, when constraints are created in an assembly, they are listed in the Design Explorer under the Constraints node. The constraints are listed in chronological order in which you insert them. Here you can see that the mate and align constraints that have been applied to this assembly are available. Another option available is to list the constraints with the component being constrained. From the View main menu, select Assembly Constraints. You can see in this example the list option is already checked. I'm also going to check With Component. Now if I expand the plus sign next to the component drive one, you'll see the list of constraints applied to that part. You'll also see as I move the cursor over each constraint, it highlights here as well as under the constraint node. Now by expanding the other component, I can also find out what components are constrained together. For example, when I move the cursor over each one, it highlights there in the workspace. Now if I go back to the View Main menu, again selecting Assembly Constraints, I can uncheck the With Component option. Now you can see that the constraints are no longer shown in the Design Explorer under the Parts. The other available option is to view the suppressed constraints. To demonstrate this, I'm going to suppress the Mate 3 constraint. Notice that it's shown in the gray text when it's suppressed. If I go to the View Main Menu and select Assembly Constraints, I can click the Suppressed option to uncheck it, turning it off. Now the Mate 3 constraint is no longer displayed. If I turn the Suppressed option back on, the Mate constraint is then displayed. You can turn these options on and off in any combination at any time to suit your modeling needs. Another aspect of the constraints in the Design Explorer is that you can expand the plus sign next to any constraint and the parts affected by that constraint will be listed under it. It's usually a good idea to fully constrain each part as you bring it into an assembly workspace so that it is constrained in all three directions. This will prevent the part from moving unexpectedly as a result of future constraints being placed. This concludes this segment of the video.